Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video I wanted to continue my little internal monologue I suppose of having looked at the Angel Cartel's new Mechubal Destroyer by having a look at some of the other Angel Cartel ships in J-Space. In short, I kind of inspired myself. I really like the Angel Cartel ships in general, they're one of my favourite pirate factions, right up there with the Garistas, and so it only felt natural to come away from the Mechabal video and try out some of the other vessels. I will eventually get my hands on something like a Macariel, I do have a Dromiel already sitting around, I just need to undock it and play around with it, but the Cinnable is a ship that I thought might work really quite well. It's a cruiser, I fly a lot of cruisers in J-Space, how does this one do? Now the Cinnable also is a really interesting design. To some people it's known as the Doom Roach because of how it appears from the top. Other people I know call it the Cinnamon Bun because of the name and yet another person likes to refer to it as the Drunken Samurai. If I put it in front view I'm sure you can see why it's called the Drunken Samurai. Seriously I had the ship ruined by someone explaining this to me. Congratulations you've all had it ruined too. If I have to have this in my head for the rest of my life you have to have the Drunken Samurai in yours too. Anyway, with all of that said and done, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know, hit like on it, drop a comment down below telling me how awful my jokes are and how much you hate the fact that I've ruined the visual appearance of the Cinnable for you now. If you want to financially support content like this and help me keep making videos, you can do so by heading across to my Patreon page where you can pledge to support, get your name at the end of each of the videos. You can also just drop in a little bit of cash into my PayPal tip jar if you fancy just buying me a coffee or whatever, that's a really cool way to show it. And I do have a Redbubble merchandise store too. In the description down below, you'll find two important things. First off, the uh, the referral link. Click on that, get yourself 1 million free skill points. You don't have to be in a new account, you can be in an old account just as long as you haven't used a referral. If you click that and log in, you will get 1 million free skill points. I get a minor kickback for that as well, so thank you very much. And finally, if you do want to come and join the Catskull Community Discord, that's linked in the description too. That's also how you join our corporation in-game. Anyway, with all of that rambling out of the way, oh boy, then we are going to take a look today at the Angel Cartel's pirate faction cruiser, the Cinnamal. Cinnamal? Wow. Cinnamon bun. Doom roach. Whichever version you want to go. It's a drunken samurai. As usual, then let's kick off proceedings by having a look at the ship's stats and characteristics, right? This gives us an idea of what the ship is designed for, maybe how we could fit it, and the kind of fun things we could do with it. Now, of course, me being me, I'm going to be taking this out into a Class 3 uh, J-Space system, and I'm going to try and rat it and see how well the Cinnable does. Is it good for this? I know a lot of you are already thinking, seriously, Benzie, ratting in a Cinnable, when are you going to be showing us that sweet, sweet PvP? Yeah. Little sidetrack on that. I've been trying to do PvP recently. Like, literally, I've done a Nullsec Rome where 12 of us went off in Tech 1 cruisers and we got dropped by a fleet of genuinely 60 pilots, including five Marauders and four Capitals. So, yeah, congratulations, Nullsec. You're really providing the strong quality content there. Okay, so we thought, right. That didn't work. Let's jump in a load of Tech 1 frigates and go and explore Kaldari faction warfare. Sujarento, Tama, places like that, right? So a fleet of, again, a dozen people in rifters and breaches decided to jump into Tama, and everyone ran away. Like, literally, I warped to a site with li uh, three destroyers sitting in it, and all three of them warp out. I'm in a rifter. I mean, a bloody rifter and three destroyers would not take that fight. Until we walk back to one of the gates and suddenly there's a Bifrost, about three Vagabonds and a load of heavy assault cruisers. So, yeah, when the EVE Online community sort their collective shit out and actually decide that, you know what, PvP is fun again, then we'll talk. Until then, yeah, I'm doing PvE videos. So anyway, let's get back on topic, shall we? The Cinnable. This is the pirate faction cruiser for the Angel Cartel, meaning it gets bonuses for Galente and Minmatar. It is a medium ship cruiser, of course, it's designed for medium modules. It's an attack cruiser designed for hit and run and pursuit tactics, uses projectile turrets and is armor or shields. Now, you can genuinely tank this either way quite comfortably. It also does work quite nicely with different versions of uh, weaponry, but we'll talk about that in a second. So Galente Cruiser is going to give us a 10% bonus to medium projectile turret fall off. Technically an auto cannon centric skill that's benefiting auto cannons more than it's benefiting uh, your artillery. 
but an artillery Cinnable is still quite a popular ship to fly. We then have Mimitar Cruiser giving a 10% bonus to medium projectile turret damage. So we're getting nice big bonuses to damage there across the board, alongside a 25% bonus to medium projectile turret rate of fire, and the Angel Cartel specific bonus of 25% bonus to warp speed and warp acceleration. This actually means we have a pretty nice warp speed of 5.0 AU per sec, um, which is fairly fast for a cruiser and you accelerate into and out of warp that little bit faster as well. Really useful in PvP, actually, because if you see someone warping away from you, if you can catch what they're warping to, if, for example, they're warping to the sun, and you warp with them, you can often overtake them in warp and land on grid, ready to actually take that fight, which means even if they break your scram, you're kind of there, ready and waiting for them to jump into the fight, and that's why the artillery cinnable can be a lot of fun, because even if you jump to, say, 30 and they jump to 70, you're still in range to hit them and deal some damage. But again, we're talking PvP. This is a PvE fit we're going to be looking at. Now, if you actually go through the attributes and have a look at things, you'll notice that the shield and the armor are actually pretty similar alongside each other, based, obviously, not including your skill and your fit and things like that. This does mean you can armor tank them, you can shield tank them. You'll notice there's no bonuses to either really in here, and the tanks themselves are fairly similar with sort of an equal-ish distribution of resistances. Now, notably, though, with the Cinnable, one of its biggest weaknesses, in my opinion, is its lack of tracking bonuses. This is a fast-moving cruiser, and we can make this very fast using the right fit. And having no tracking bonuses can mean sometimes you do actually kind of out-track yourself. I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks if we were to buff the Angel Cartel ships, then giving the Cinnable a little bit of tracking might be a way to do that. I don't know, but anyway, that is the ship itself. Let's take a look at the fit that I'm going to be running. This is the fit. Let's hit simulate to show a case it all in action. Right, what are we looking at? So high slots, 425mm auto cannon twos. Load, hail, never fail. Simple as that. We're going to be in C3 ratting sites. The things that we need to consider are there are going to be cruisers and frigates in there that are going to be fairly hard to hit. We are also going to have those beautiful awakened up holders. Awakened up holders like to orbit at 30 kilometers, web you, and then uh, also neutralize you. So we need a bit of capacitor stability to survive those up holders, and we need decent enough range. Fortunately, Auto cannons actually do surprisingly well here on the Cinnable. Look at that fall off range of 23 kilometers. This means we can actually hit targets up to 40 kilometers away with hail. Should you? No, you should probably swap to barrage if you're over 23 kilometers, really. But you can use hail if you really, 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 really want to run just one type of ammunition in your Cinnable. Load hail, never fail, but I do recommend carrying barrage as well to take out those upholders. We've only got four turret hard points, so the fifth high slot is then a medium ghoul compact energy Nosferatu. This is going to help us maintain capacitor stability a little bit better whilst we're being muted. Capacitor stability, definitely something this ship does lack, and I played around with that a lot, and it's, mm, yeah, it, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Now, I went for shield tanking on this particular version. Um, you can go armor tanking, obviously, with the Cinnable as well, and that does really work in PvE, but it does come at the sacrifice of some DPS. So, I went shield tanking. Here we have a Pythum C-Type Medium Shield Booster, supported by two Multi-Spectrum Shield Hardener 2s. Again, a lot of people ask me, why don't I bling out the, uh, the Multi-Spectrum Shield Hardeners? And it's because a standard Multi-Spectrum Shield Hardener is worth X, whereas a Multi-Spectrum Shield Hardener, say C-Type or whatever, they seem to be worth hundreds of millions every time. They are ludicrously expensive. Um, and in my opinion, just not worth the extra minor upgrade. If you can't survive with two shield hardeners, you're not gonna survive with two blinged out ones, really. It's it's not that huge a difference. Um, there is a difference, yes. And it is going to mean you survive 30 seconds rather than 10 seconds, but you're still not surviving the site. And when I'm fitting for PVE, I need it either yes, you survive, or no, you don't. Capacitor stability in the form of a Republic Fleet large cap battery could also go a Thuka uh, large cap battery here, but I went Republic Fleet because it's what I had available, alongside a Federation Navy 10 mega newton afterburner. Now, you can bling this one up a bit. Again, this is a ship that does like its speed. Blinging this up does help because it allows us to use the slightly tighter fitting requirements more efficiently, and we get those higher speeds. That said, with a standard Federation Navy 10 meg, we're looking at 940 meters per second anyway. That's really fast for a cruiser. It's going to do us the job just fine. 
are low slots then, two tracking enhancers, two gyro stabilizers, and a damage control too, just to help increase those resistances a little bit. Now you might be thinking, hang on Benzie, didn't you say that tracking was an, uh, a problem with this particular ship? And yes, I did. Did I fix that in the rigs? Yes, I did. Metastasis adjuster increased the tracking speed there of those autos. Basically, without this, I found I was missing every single frigate way too frequently, and sites were taking too long to clear just because the frigates would not die. Like, they would die, they wouldn't cause a problem, it just, everything took so long because it was constantly graze, misses, graze, graze, misses, 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 graze, and it's like, oh, for, come on, hit it, hit the damn thing and kill it. When I hit, it did massive damage, but there we go. This is alongside a medium EM shield reinforcer 2 and a medium capacity control circuit 2. Again, you can, you know, you could play around with these a bit, like I'd like a bit more cap stability if I'm honest, but I don't want to sacrifice the EM shield. And if you take that off, well, I mean, your EM resistance drops down to 54%, which means you get hit by one of those turrets. It does really hurt. So I do not recommend that. Now, on the subject of tracking, there is one other little trick up my sleeve here with this Cinnable. And that's that I'm carrying Valkyrie SWs and Warrior SWs. These are Webifier drones. Now, ignore the numbers. Obviously, you want to be carrying more than this. You can launch five Valkyrie SWs. I just lost a load because I'm an idiot when it comes to piloting drones. But carrying a load of Valkyries and Warrior SWs allows you to Webify the target without sacrificing a mid slot. Yeah, okay, web drones aren't as good as an actual Webifier they're enough for the Cinnable to start hitting and dealing solid DPS. So that's what we're going to do. And I really need to do a video on explaining all these different types of electronic warfare drones as well, because they're not something that came in Eve Echoes, and I think they're something that I definitely forget to use an awful lot. Um, so yeah, maybe I need to do a video on that. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to do a video talking about all the different types of E-War drones and things like that. Anyway, all of that, that is the fit right there. You can see the stats on the side here, how this works. This is good enough to survive most of the sites. It can just about get away with an outpost frontier with very good piloting. It can get away with the solar cell with decent piloting. It can get uh, th away with the fortification frontier. The Aruz does tend to be a problem. That first wave of the Aruz, the fact that you're gonna be hit getting hit by four upholders with newts and webs, they just web you to the spot, mute you out, and you're taking too much damage to be able to heal um, because this ship is obviously de designed around signature tanking via speed. So bear that in mind. Fortification Frontier is your best bet, but you can also run a solar cell or a outpost if you are so inclined. But Fortification Frontier is definitely the best one to run with the Cinnable. Anyway, let's prove that. Let's showcase it in action. Everybody loves a fortification frontier stronghold. Yes, this is, of course, the good old FFS, everyone's favorite class three wormhole ratting site. They're quick to clear, easy to clear, and have the best ISK per EHP, if I recall correctly. Anyway, we are here in the first wave. So what I'm gonna be doing here is basically approaching the, one of the awakened defenders with my afterburner running, Looking at screen, I'm telling myself with my afterburner running. Yeah, do 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 make sure that it's running. I've got my, both the multi-spectrum shield hardness active. Um, I really should have that afterburner running at this point. I, I'm kind of there. We go. Well done, past Benzie. You figured it out. Mobile tractor unit is down. Start moving towards the awakened defender and orbiting them, and start shooting the emergent defenders on the way. You'll see the drones will fly off out. They will start to web that target down, slowing it down enough for my auto cannons to do just that little bit more application and blap down everything goes nice and quickly at that point. Still not quite as good as I'd like, but I don't have the one extra mid slot that I kind of wish the Cinnable had at that point, right? Because an additional mid slot on the Cinnable would just give me that ability to either use a target painter on an artillery fit. Well, no fairness, you kind of sacrifice tank and just do that anyway. Um, but on this fit, I would love to have one more mid slot just to shove in something like a Federation Navy stasis weapon fire or another, you know, cap battery. Things we could do with this, but yeah, probably people are going to tell me, no, that would make the Cinnable too powerful, too strong. You know, it, it might need a buff, but it doesn't need like an extra slot. And if it did get an extra slot, it also needs a bit of extra PG and CPU to help support that. But hey, that's a different topic that I'm not going to get into. I don't know. Maybe some of you folks would like me to actually comment on ships like that, give my thoughts and opinions as to how it could be buffed or changed. But I'm not convinced that I'm necessarily qualified to give that opinion. So I don't know. 
Anyway, you can see here, I'm actually struggling to take this Awakened Defender down quickly. It's not any threat to me, I'm hitting it with damage, it's okay, it's going down. And Defenders do have a decent amount of HP to them, but it's kind of like I'm already looking at this and thinking, you know what, the Vagabond is cheaper, and it does this better. Like, genuinely, the Cinnable to me, it feels like a, a more versatile Vagabond that's just not as good which i guess is kind of the point of the like tech two ships tech two ships are more specialized and the vagabond definitely sort of sits there and goes no i am a shield tank ship um whereas the cinnable does have the kind of i can be shield i can be armor i can be ooh, I can do, do. yeah i've got that song stuck in my head now wonderful great there we go thinking of ryan reynolds and what's his name singing that one um but anyway so <laughs> we're coming on to the awakened defender i am actually going to skip ahead a little bit in this one because the next wave is pretty boring i just kind of wanted to showcase that yeah we can hit the frigates and then i want to showcase what can go wrong there is the end of the second wave with that second awakened up holder going down nice and easy off we go cool third and final wave here we do have the battleship and you do need to get your traversal up really quickly faster than i did there if you want to be able to comfortably survive this wave because yeah there's a lot of damage going to be hitting you in this wave if you are not piloting very very carefully now i have done this site about eight times and of those eight times about five of them i've managed to do absolutely perfectly and not take a single hit on armor in fact i think a couple of them i didn't even have to overheat here you see i am having to overheat which is not an ideal situation to be in but you know it is what it is just carry some nanite repair paste with you have your thermodynamic skill well trained but you see bam i took a massive hit into my armor there which is not what you want you can actually pilot this so that you never take that hit into armor here on this particular run i'm not entirely sure what went wrong i've got my traversal up against the big ships just yeah i guess i'm moving a little bit slow possibly just a lucky shot hit me that does genuinely happen and you'll see that from this point onwards it's not really much of a problem once that upholder goes down and i've got one of those webs taken off me boom i'm now moving much faster therefore we are a harder to hit target for all of those high energy things that the uh the the, the, the laser weapons that the sleepers are using the turrets is what i'm trying to get out there but again it, it is it, it's pilot sensitive and i actually really quite enjoy flying ships like this this is why I probably don't enjoy the Rattlesnake for C3 ratting as much, or even the healer, because the healer and the Rattlesnake are kind of just, hey, we're going to sit here and shoot at everything, and oh, it's dead, yay, let's move on and get on with our days. Whereas I actually enjoy the whole having to manually pilot. I want to play the game, right? I actually want to play the game. I just don't just want to hit auto orbit or just hit orbit and move on to the next thing. W, click, W, click, F1, W, click, F1. That's not a fun playstyle for me. I want to be able to have to do a bit of manual piloting, a bit of maneuvering around the battlefield and actually, you know, getting involved in the game. That's that's what I do. That's what I enjoy. So I quite enjoy flying ships like this, but this does bring up the obviously burning question of is the Cinnable really worth it? And I honestly have to say that, look, if you've got Galente Cruiser 5 and you don't have Minmatar Cruiser 5, or you've got Minmatar Cruiser 5 and you don't have Galente Cruiser 5, you're much better off training the heavy assault cruiser skill than the other faction's cruiser skill. Like, if you've got a choice between going, say, the Deimos, the Vagabond, or the Cinnable, go Deimos or Vagabond. Really go Deimos or Vagabond. If you really want to fly a projectile cruiser for C3 content, go Vagabond. It can do all four sights, and it does them faster than the Cinnable does, and it's cheaper. I don't know. I think the what makes the Cinnable decent, or makes the Cinnable interesting at least, is the fact that it is so versatile. So if you wanted to have a ship that you can use for PvE and PvP, I mean, crappy, even... Even the Vagabond does that. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I suppose the argument here is that if you really want to be armor tanking and using projectiles, the Cinnable can do that. Not this fit, but the Cinnable can do that where the Vagabond doesn't do it so well. So there is that, I guess, maybe, perhaps, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'd love thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Perhaps I've just got the fit as is at my fit's absolute trash. Maybe that's it, right? You know, let me know. Let me know. Because quite frankly, if you guys can come up with a fit for a Cinnable that is better than this one and run C3 combats better than this one, yeah, 
I'll give you a massive shout out and do a video featuring it. That, that would be awesome. And if you do PvP with the Cinnable, I'd love to hear your thoughts there as well, because yeah, I want to do more PvP, assuming people will actually take the bloody fights. But there we go. Anyway, combat demonstration. You can see I'm quite comfortably surviving at this point in time. No real threat anymore. It's just a case of slowly whittling down that sleepless upholder's health and, you know, getting on with life. Anyway, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end, folks. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Cinnable in general. Would love to know what you think about this ship and if you pilot it, if you fly it, how you're using it. Otherwise, stay tuned to see all of the awesome people who support my channel on Patreon. Their names are coming up in just a second. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.